Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, feel free to email me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Be sure to cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley, podcastalley.greatdetectives.net. And follow us over on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Well, before we do get started, I do want to remind you about Audible. You know, Audible brings you a great world of audio... Uh, entertainment. It brings books to you when you don't have time to read. The Audible subscription includes one audiobook a month plus a discount on any other audio books. Our listeners can try Audible out free for two weeks and you get a free uh, audiobook for trying it. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash oldtimeradio to begin your free trial. Let's get into today's episode of Nero Wolf, The Case of the Disappearing Diamond. Ladies and gentlemen, the ringing of that phone bell brings you mystery, adventure. Nero Wolf's office, Archie Goodwin speaking. Willie Inch, did you say? Just a second. Do you want to talk to a fellow named Willie Inch, which I doubt? No. He says he's got to see you, got to. Who is he? I'll ask. Uh, Mr. Wolf doesn't recognize your name, Mr. Inch. He wants to know who you are. Uh, Just a second, I'll tell him. Mr. Inch says he's a sneak thief. He says you never heard of him, but he's heard of you. Should I tell him to get lost? Wait a minute, Archie. Ask him what he wants. Uh, Inch, Mr. Wolf wants to know what you want to see him about. A phony murder rap. This is a phony murder rap. It'd have to be, wouldn't it, Archie? How do you mean? Phony, I mean. Did you ever hear of a sneak thief committing murder if it could possibly be avoided? Yes, Archie. Tell Mr. Inch. I'll listen to his story. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that renowned genius who is the bulkiest, balkiest, most ponderous, and most brilliant detective in the world. Yes, none other than that chair-borne mass of unpredictable intellect, Nero Wolfe, created by Rex Stout and brought to you in a new series of adventures over this NBC network in the person of Mr. Sidney Greenstreet. Mr. Wolf and I talk about this little difficulty. He calls it the case of Archie Goodwin and how he got hooked. However, I call it the case of the disappearing diamonds. I prefer my title. He prefers his. Anyhow, it started with an improbable character named Willie Inch. That'll be our sneak thief, Archie. Let him in. Okay, boss. Okay. Inch? Yeah. Come in. In there. I'll follow you. Mr. Wolf, this is your client. Mr. Inch? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Tall fellow. Must be over six feet six. Sit down. Uh, where? Archie? Here, Mr. Inch. This ought to be comfortable. Where, well, Mr. Inch? Uh, uh, look, Mr. Wolf. They're going to claim that I killed a woman I never even touched. And I'm going to fry for something I never even done. All right, Mr. Inch. How did you kill her? I didn't. I didn't. I never killed nobody in my life. Mr. Inch, you say you're a thief. Can you prove it? Uh, I got a record. Why? I was wondering about that bulge in your pocket. Oh. Oh, here? It's a, it's a silver cigarette lighter, ain't it? I guess it sort of dropped into my pocket as I was going by. Y- you see you see the way it happened? Never mind, Miss Dange. Now tell me how you didn't kill the woman for whose murder you were fry. Well, well, Mr. Wolf, sir, it, it was like this. There was a window half open, you see, and I happened to crawl inside the house. But hey, now. Well, Miss Dange? This, uh... This is just between us, ain't it? Possibly. How do you mean? Explain, Archie. Mr. Wolf said possibly. Oh. Well, uh, okay. So I happen to find myself in the bedroom, see? So I happen to sort of roam around, and I hear there's like a party going on. You know, people and music. So I lock the door. So go on. Let him tell it his own way, Archie. Well, Miss Lynch? So that's the mistake I make. Mistake? Maybe I, I leave my fingerprints on the door. So? So, so later, a dame gets herself knocked off in the same room. And they look for fingerprints. And they find mine. I'm it. That's all. I, I got a record. So, so the chair. I see. Pitiful case, isn't it, Archie? Very, very mournful. Inch. Uh, yes, sir. I presume you came away with some souvenirs? Oh, nothing. It wasn't worth the trouble. You know, just odds and ends, junk. 
Have you got the junk with you? Yeah. Let me see. Uh, here. Cigarette case, platinum. Lighter, gold. Vanity case, gold. That's, that's all? Mm, positively. Junk, the man says. I promise nothing, Mr. Inch, but it might be better if you told the truth. Me? You. Oh, well. Mm. One square cut emerald ring. I, I just happened to find it. Here's something more. A pewter ashtray. Look, the room is dark. I can't see. Piles of coats under beds and hats and handbags. I take what I find. Why didn't you turn on the lights? One of these big standing lamps. You know what I mean. Go on. I bump into it. And it scares the living... I mean, it scares me. So? I, I turn the switch. It don't work. Archie. That sounds like the law, boss. The law. Stay right where you are, will you? May I suggest that there is a way to find out, Archie? Okay, okay. We don't want any. Good morning, Goodwin. You remember me, your old friend, Inspector Kramer? Two gentlemen with me are also with the department, Pearly and Ostrakovich. May we come in? What do you want? We want a murderer, and we want some rocks worth 250 grand. Does that answer your question? What makes you think you'll find all those goodies here? Come in, man. We know Willie Inch is here. Where is he? Now, just a second. We're coming with you, Goodwin. Okay, Inspector, come along. Uh, the law. That's Willie Inch. Frisk him. Uh, no weapons? Okay, just put the cuffs on him. Inspector Kramer. Oh, yes. Hello, Wolf. I want to tell you something about this man whom you and your men have so bravely captured in my office. You don't need to tell me about him, Wolf. We know about him. Indeed. Yes. We know he killed Mrs. Florence Avery March and stripped a quarter of a million worth of diamonds off her. That's all we need to know. I didn't do no such a thing. Where's the ice, Willie? I never even seen none, honest. Take him away, boys. I'll make the charge when I get back to my office. Wait. Uh, Mr. Wolf, sir. Take him. Look, I ain't done nothing, I tell you. Inspector Kramer. Yeah. We're going to have a little talk now, aren't we? If necessary. How do you mean? Explain, Archie. Uh, Mr. Wolf means you're going to have a little talk if necessary. Very funny. I will now draw up a chair and show you why it's necessary. In the first place, $250,000 worth of diamonds makes it necessary. Archie, if you please, a bottle of beer. Okay. Will the inspector name his poison? You know I never drink on duty. And just for me, Archie, please. On my way. While I opened a bottle of imported beer, it occurred to me that I had something to be grateful for. At least I wasn't in Willie Inch's enormous shoes. And as I went back to the office, I had time to wonder why Mr. Wolf would stick his fat neck out for a no good like Willie. Thank you, Archie. And sit down, Archie. Inspector Kramer has a theory that may amuse you. Near our Wolf's office. It's for you, Inspector. Hello, Kramer. Yeah? A gold cigarette holder? That's all? Okay. Inspector, do you realize that you have already taken a great deal of my time? Archie. Yes, Inspector? The great Mr. Wolf just said I had a theory that might amuse you. Would you care to hear it? I can hardly wait. Okay. My theory is that both Wolf and you are receivers of stolen property and possibly guilty of murder conspiracy. So far, you got me in stitches. <laughs> Willie Inch, with a record as long as your arm, robs the home of Mrs. Florence Avery Marsh. She strangles her with a silk scarf, takes the diamond she's wearing, grabs everything else that's lying around, and then what? Is it a question? I'll tell you what. He will, too. <laughs> Archie, listen, listen. Then Inch brings the stuff here, the stuff that's piled on Wolf's desk and the diamonds. You want me to tell you where the diamonds are? They're in that safe right there. Inspector Kramer, I know nothing about the diamonds. They are not in the safe and they are not in the house. Now you can take my word for it, or you can get a search warrant and make a fool of yourself. I'm going to have lunch. <laughs> By two o'clock, the newspapers were full of the murder of Mrs. Florence Avery March. The suspect was already in custody, caught at the home of Nero Wolf, well-known private investigator. Some of the stolen jewelry had been recovered, but not the diamonds. 
Then we had a visit from Mr. Anson Stark, who had opened Mrs. March's door and found her dead. Stark was a big athletic guy of about 30 or so with the large, capable hands of a surgeon or a laboratory worker. He seemed annoyed at the inconvenience we caused him, but that was only natural. That's the story, Mr. Wolf. I don't see how I can add anything more to it. Uh, you had known Mrs. March for several years, huh? Mm, casually. When you broke the door open, uh, was it difficult? Not very. You were the first into the room? There were three or four of us. We pushed in together. You saw the body of Mrs. March immediately? She was lying across the bed that was heaped with coats and hats and handbags. You knew she was dead? Of course not. In fact, somebody else discovered that she had been choked to death. And who discovered that the diamonds were gone? I don't know. I didn't. Uh, were there many diamonds, Mr. Stark? No, just a few, but big ones. She wore them on a pendant around her neck. Mr. Stark, I want to thank you again for having been so patient. I have been patient, Mr. Wolf. I have my own business to attend to. Which is? Oh, I have a small but hopeful enterprise. Electronics, tubes for radio and television. Mostly experimental. Well, that reminds me, Mr. Stark. When you entered the bedroom, was the light on or off? Uh, let me see. Of course, it was on. It must have been on. Why? Just curiosity, Mr. Stark. Oh? Anything more? That's all, except thank you for coming here. Archie, will you take Mr. Stark to the door? Mr. Stark departed like a man who'd been delayed by a petty annoyance. A few minutes later, the door buzzed. And I went, expecting anything. Anything but what was standing on the threshold when I opened up. A honey blonde. Or, to put it another way, a blonde honey. I said hello. No, more like hello. Are you Mr. Wolf? Uh, I'm his assistant, Archie Goodwin. And what can we do for you? Well, I'm Valerie Ladd. And I'm Archie Goodwin. Or did I tell you that? Well, that's exactly where I came in. Well, I mean, where well, I thought you were going to ask me to come in. Oh, come in, come in. I'm sorry. How is he? Is he here? Wolf? Mm -hmm. Uh, does he know you? No. Is he expecting you? No. I see. Of course you don't see, do you? Well, uh, this is it, Mr. Goodwin. I'm a writer. Well, I may not look like it, but that's what I am. And I want to do a, a profile, a character study of Mr. Wolf for a magazine. Uh oh. Well... What's wrong? Well, you see, there's a writer named Rex Stout. Oh, I know. He's written a lot about Nero Wolf, but... Well, can't I write about him, too? I don't know if he's going to like it. But you can't be shot for trying. Come on. Mr. Wolf, this is Valerie Ladd. Pardon me for not rising, Miss Ladd. It is not impolite. It is merely impracticable. Miss Ladd wants to write about you for a magazine. Please, Mr. Wolf. Nonsense. Mr. Wolf, if I could just spend a few hours with you, that would be enough. Would it indeed? Oh, yes. Have you written much, Miss Ladd? Oh, reams. You know, uh, the habits of writers interest me. The habits? Yeah, the writing habits. For instance, do you use a pen or a pencil? Do you dictate, or like most writers, do you do your own typing? Mr. Wolf, if you knew the hours and days and, and years that I've pounded a typewriter. Of course. Archie. Yes, sir. Why don't you take Miss Ladd up and show her the orchids? You never know about Nero, Wolf. At least I never do. This was something I would have bet against a thousand to one. I couldn't understand. But I certainly couldn't complain. Archie, look at this one. Oh, did you ever see anything so gorgeous? Very pretty. Oh, they're all just beyond belief. Yeah? But you're not even looking at them, Archie. What? Oh! <laughs> Archie, are you always like this? What do you mean, like this? Well, so... So distant and preoccupied. Honey, you got me wrong. Completely. I was thinking. Oh. Yeah, about telephone number. A lovely thing to think about. What can you think about telephone numbers? I was thinking how some girls have them and some don't. Oh, I see. Archie, I apologize. For what? I did have you wrong. You're not a bit distant. I can be a lot closer than this, honey. What is it? What's what? The number. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's in the book. Yeah? I wonder. Hmm. Out as if you don't believe me. Oh, I believe you, but uh, here's a telephone book. Yeah, let's lick it up together, shall we? 
Uh, Archie. Yeah. I, I'm afraid I lied to you. I was afraid of that, too. Are you angry? Well, I can take no for an answer, honey. Even when it's hard to take. Archie, I've changed my mind. I want you to have my number. And I want you to use it, too. You know, honey, I'm beginning to take an interest in this dialogue. Let's have it. Okay. Olympia 9, 3659. And a very, very pretty number it is. Valerie... Lad, two Ds. Mm-hmm. Olympia nine three six five nine. Honey blonde, gorgeous. Oh, spelled <gasps> gorgeous. There. Uh, what are we doing tonight, Olympia nine? And I said that you were distant and preoccupied. Uh, we were talking about tonight. Hmm. All right, Archie. Yes, I'd love it. Oh, these orchids—they're <laughs> really beyond belief, and you won't even look at them. True. I'm too busy looking at you. Well, how do I look, Archie? Beyond belief, honey. <laughs> beyond belief. Well, there goes the good one luck again. It's a house phone part. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. He wants us to come down. Archie. Yes, dear. Even if he says no, we uh, we still have a date? Honey, though the heavens fall. When we entered the office, Mr. Wolf was frowning over a sheet of letter paper in his hand. He looked up and tossed the paper to me. That is a peculiar thing, Archie. The sheet of letter paper just arrived. Since Miss Ladd is interested in detection, show it to her. Thank you. Well, it was some sort of code, isn't it? Q-W-E-R-T-Y-U-I-O-P. That's all. What do you suppose it means? You're kidding. Archie. Oh. What? Did I say something wrong? No, 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 no. Miss Laird, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I haven't time for an interview just now. Goodbye, Miss Laird. Oh, but Mr. Wolf. Goodbye, Archie. Say goodbye to Mr. Wolf and let's go, honey. Goodbye. That's the way things can be around here. Well, here's the door, and shall we, uh, shall we pause for station identification? Hmm. Oh. I'll wipe it off, Archie. There. Thanks. Well, what happened, Archie? Yes, indeed. Yeah, oh, Mr. Wolf, I mean. Oh. Why did he suddenly want me to go? Well, I'll tell you, though. I don't know whether I should. That, that code message he showed you? Yes. Quirky up. You remember? Yeah, sure. Because I use a typewriter. From left to right, it's the first bank of letters on any typewriter. I see. It was a test. Yeah. And you flunked it, baby. You're no writer. Archie, I I, I can explain Sure, it. sure, sure. Tonight. Tonight, Archie. You do believe me, don't you, Archie? Oh, of course, baby, of course. Well, it's just that I was there at the party, I mean, when, when poor Florence was murdered... Then I read in the paper about, well, how they caught the man at Nero Wolf's. And I always wanted to be a writer, so I thought if I could get an exclusive interview and... Well, that would be a good way to start my career, wouldn't it? Yes, yes, it would. Uh, pardon me a second, will you, Valerie? I've got to make a phone call. There's a booth. It'll only take a minute or two. Nero Wolf speaking. Archie, I'm at the Riviera with Valerie Ladd. I'm happy for you, Archie. I will remind you that I have not seen you since Valerie left the house. I was otherwise occupied, Archie. With orchids. With orchids? What do you want, Archie? Look, with that typewriter gag, you practically told me she was a phony, didn't you? Of course, of course. Just for the record, how did you know? Have you looked at her fingernails? She never touched a typewriter in her life. I wanted to be sure. Okay, now... Now, do you want me to tell you something? You mean that your charming companion, Valerie, was at the party when Mrs. March was murdered? How did you know that? Simple, Archie. I got a list of the guests from Inspector Kramer. Among them was the name of Valerie Ladway. Simple? Ladway. Lad. 
Yeah, sure. Okay, what am I supposed to do about it? Just hang on, Archie. Just hang on. I went back to the honey blonde, the beautiful, phony Valerie Ladd, Ladway. I mean, I went back to the table where she should have been, but she wasn't there. I sat down and waited. Looked at my watch, 11.24. 11.32, no Miss Ladway. 11.45, I finally realized that not only Valerie, but her coat and bag were also absent. I called the waiter. Yes, sir? Uh, what happened to my friend? The young lady left some time ago, sir. Okay, give me the bill. She paid it, sir. She did? Yes, sir. In fact, she said you gave her the money for it. Yeah? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, I didn't know it, but she is certainly right. Oh, oh my. Well, Archie, this is most thoughtless of you. Sorry, I, uh... I lost my keys. My money, too. Your keys, Archie? Yeah. Glad you were still up. You lost Miss Ladway, too? Definitely. I'm going to bed. Good night, Archie. You think it's funny, don't you? <laughs> yes, Archie. Yes, yes, I do. Good night, Mr. Wolf. Archie. Yeah? Before you retire, one thing. What? Open the safe, will you? And leave it open. Why? Because there's nothing in it of importance. And it's a valuable safe, and I don't want it damaged. Good night, Archie. At about two o'clock in the morning, I thought I heard a noise. I got up, put on the rest of my pajamas, picked up my gun, and went down to the office. The man had his head in the safe, and everything was scattered all over. I stepped inside the door. Put your hands behind your back and stand up. Okay. Now, just what are you after, bud? Uh... When I woke up, I was alone on the office floor. I did not feel good. The place looked as if a hurricane had struck it. Every file drawer had been empty. I felt a draft from somewhere. Got to my feet, trying not to joggle my head too much. There was a front door standing open. I closed it gently. Then very, very gently, I groped my way to the kitchen for ice, water, and towels. Archie! What? Oh, didn't you hear me scream? No. Is it bad? It's better. You're angry, aren't you? Nuts. What, Archie? I said nuts, Mr. Wolf. Nuts. I'm sorry about what happened. Yeah, you expected it. But I didn't expect you to be caught by somebody behind you. You must have known there would have been two of them. Now, how would I know that? How? Think of Mr. Ladway's delicate hands. Do you believe she intended to open the safe herself? You think she stole my keys and so on? Well, let me tell you... Hey, wait. That guy was digging in the safe that... Then who hit me in the head? (laughs) Ah, gee, someday you'll be the death of me. In the morning, will you tell Inspector Kramer I'd like to see him yet? Fuming and protesting, Kramer arrived about 1.30. When I let him into the office, Mr. Wolfe was gazing thoughtfully at the ground floor plan of the house of the late Mrs. Florence Avery March. We'd gotten it from the original architects. Wolfe looked up and almost smiled. Thank you for coming to me, Inspector. You know how difficult it is for me to come to you. Okay, okay, what's up? I take it you haven't found the diamonds. No, not yet. We'll break inch down, though. Don't think we won't. Oh, I'm sure. But this is what I want to ask you, and it's quite serious. Okay, okay, all right, what? After the body was found, your man arrived at the house before anyone left. Right. And before anybody was allowed to go, every person was searched thoroughly. Nobody could have gotten a pin or a needle out of that place. I know something about police methods, and I believe you. Now, how thoroughly did you search the house itself? Wolf, look, we've got that floor plan you're studying now. There are no hidden closets. Every square inch of that house has been examined. The diamonds aren't there. Willie Inch killed the dame and snatched the diamonds. 
What he did with them, we'll find out. Possibly, possibly. Goodbye, Inspector. At approximately 3.15, the postman arrived with an envelope for me. The envelope contained my keys, the bill from the Riviera, and the money left after the check was paid. At approximately 5.07 p.m., I discovered that Wolf had been using the telephone all by himself. He explained. He was going to have a party. He had invited all of the guests who were at Mrs. Florence Avery March's somewhat fatal party, including Anson Stark, Willie Inch, and Valerie. Near old Wolf, the natural-born ham, he made an entrance that would have been worthy of Queen Victoria in her heavier days. He sat in his oversized throne behind his oversized desk and beamed at the peasants. Valerie moved toward me. I'm, I'm sorry, Archie, but you must know why I did it. Why? Well, you said I wasn't a writer. I wanted to prove that you weren't a detective. Did you take the stuff while we were dancing? I could have, couldn't I? You could have bumped me on the head last night, too, couldn't you? Oh, Archie. Let it go. It was humiliating, though. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you realize the purpose of this party. We want to know who killed Mrs. March and what became of her diamond. Mr. Inch. Uh, yeah? When you visited the room where the body was found, the room was dark? Uh, the bulb was burned out. I tried to turn it on. If there had been a body on the bed, would you have seen it? Maybe. With all those coats, maybe not. Sir. Sure. Mr. Stark? Yes, I said the light was on. Perhaps I was wrong. What of it? You are engaged in the manufacture of tubes for radio and television, huh? I told you that. Inspector Kramer. Yeah, why? A light bulb was found in the wastebasket in the room where Mrs. March died. Yeah. Like you said, we tried the bulb in the socket and it worked. So what? One more question. Does anybody remember whether Mr. Stark was carrying a bundle or a package... Under his arm when he arrived at Mrs. March's party. Oh, I do, Mr. Wolf. I think he had a box of flowers. That's true. I did bring flowers. No, Mr. Stark. That box contained two parts of a light bulb and some adhesive. During the party, you strangled Mrs. March, put the diamonds into the light bulb, assembled the thing, and screwed it into the lamp socket. Archie, stop him! Really, Archie, it was quite simple. Light bulbs are only a stem glass bowl and a brass sea. Yet nobody, including the police, would think of looking inside one. And Mr. Stark could come back and collect his treasure any time after the excitement had died down. What's the matter, Archie? I got a headache. Valerie Ladd. Led me. Poor girl. She and whoever the man was with her must have thought the diamonds were here. That bump on your head will be better in the morning. A bottle of beer, please, Archie. I'm going to bed. <laughs> yes. Why must you place such confidence in women? Remember what happened to Mark Antony and Samson and Archie Goodwin. <laughs> Good night, Archie. You have been listening to The New Adventures of Nero Wolf, starring Sidney Greenstreet. Tonight's transcribed story by Mindred Lord was based on the characters created by Rex Stout, produced and directed by J. Donald Wilson. This is an Edwin Fadiman production. In the cast were Harry Bartell as Archie Goodwin, and G.G. Pearson, Bud Heaston, Gray Stafford, Dick Ryan, and Bill Johnstone. Next week, at this same time, Nero Wolfe and Archie will bring you The Case of the Midnight Ride. Don Stanley speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Welcome back. This was a pretty clever mystery. Uh, I also think it's quite interesting in terms of representing a, a bit of the authors of the uh, radio plays 
uh, kind of shifting the show around so that it matches more uh, with what's in the book. Uh, earlier episodes of Nero Wolf had uh, Wolf and Kramer on kind of almost chummy terms. And with Wolf uh, frequently making exceptions to his no leaving the house on business rule. Doubtless the uh, writers and NBC heard from uh, the public about uh, some of the things that didn't seem to ring true through the uh, to the book. So there have been some uh, adjustments. Uh, of course, uh, Sidney Greenstreet puts his own stamp on Wolf uh, with the laugh. That's always going to be part of it. Wolf never quite laughed as much in the books as Greenstreet, uh, Greenstreet does, but part of the reason people enjoy Greenstreet is this uh, very distinctive laugh. I also love the uh, solution to this case. This was uh, very clever and uh, commonsensical at the same time. Regarding Mr. Greenstreet, Tony says, I always liked Sidney Greenstreet. He always played a class act as a villain or detective. Um, and usually, uh, it was the villain. There's one film I'm aware of where he played a detective, but it really wasn't a mystery, and his detective uh, wasn't the main character. But Greenstreet uh, played a lot of characters very similar to the uh, fat man he played in the Maltese Falcon and really left a big impression on the uh, uh, silver screen, uh, particularly when you consider how old he was when he started uh, in films at age 62 uh, and uh, continued to act on screen for about eight years before he took on uh, Nero Wolf. He really defined the... Uh, the archetype of how you create a villain who is sophisticated, cultured, and yet still a very dangerous customer, and has been imitated countless times. He truly provided the template for a lot of authors' uh, imaginations to feed on. Also, I have to say I love that uh, reference about Rex Stout thrown into the middle. That was just, that was very cute. Um, finally, we got one more comment from a listener from Podcast Alley. Thanks for this podcast. Well, thank you for your comment, and I encourage everybody to cast your vote this month. Uh, and let us know what your favorite uh, show is as well when you vote, and we'll give you the totals at the end of the month. Uh, remember, podcastalley.greatdetectives.net. Well, that'll do us uh, for now. We'll be back uh, tomorrow with Let George Do It. In the meanwhile, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us over on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And you can always give us a call, 208-991-4783. But from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.